Hi, this is Frank here with Die Hard RC Addicts, and today I'm going to be doing a quick video unboxing my uh, new 3D Robotics Iris Plus that I just got. Um, I'm also going to be unboxing a gimbal that I found on eBay that's specifically made for my uh, Sony Action Cam that's designed to fit the Iris Plus. So we'll go ahead and do the unboxing of the Iris Plus first, and then we'll take a look at the gimbal afterwards. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Before we open the box, I wanted to flip it over and show you the back of the box. It has some general information about the Iris Plus on here. The first thing mentioned on the back of the box is that the Iris Plus can be used for advanced aerial video and full autonomous control, and that it's a ready-to-fly package. Down here it says that it's fully assembled, minus having to add the props and charge the battery before you go. It also has a follow me mode. Um, you can use your GoPro and an Android device to follow you around and film you. It even says you can use a Pebble smartwatch to control it. There's also a 3D modeling program that you can use. It uses the images from the camera to create 3D images. It has an integrated mission planner that provides automated vehicle control and built-in flight protection. There's also real-time wireless data provided to the radio transmitter from the quadcopter. It also, you can uh, download your recorded details of your flight and share them on uh, DroneShare.com. The Iris Plus now has an upgraded uh, power system. It's got more powerful motors and a lighter frame than the original Iris. Um, this is a, helps give it longer flight times. That and the, they've upgraded the battery to a bigger size battery as well. And it says that it can provide up to 20 minutes of flight time depending on payload. The last thing shown here is talking about a droney button. I guess on the Android device you can push a single button and the drone will take off and take a droney picture of you. Okay, let's go ahead and flip the box back over and get it open. Okay, let's go ahead and open it and take a look inside. Everything looks like it's nice and tightly packed in here. Um, it doesn't look like anything can actually move around, so they did a really good job of packaging it. Um, I'm going to have to take one thing out at a time and take a look at it. Let's go ahead and start with the transmitter. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out of the box and get it out of the plastic. Okay, I got the transmitter out of the box, and as you can see, it's got all the switches labeled for what they do. This transmitter looks very familiar. It's uh, basically the same thing as the Turnigy 9X that I already have, um, or a FR Sky Radio. At the bottom here is the screen where it's going to display the telemetry. Um, let's go ahead and flip it over and see what's on the back side of it. All right, looking at the back of the radio, it has a plug-in module. It looks like a FR Sky uh, telemetry module. And as you can see, it's already wired into the radio. And the telemetry has already been programmed into it. So that's pretty much it for the radio. Let's go ahead and move on to the next item. Um, we're going to go ahead and take out this box. It looks like a battery charger for the battery. Um, it's a pretty simple looking charger. 3 amps and looks like it charges up to 3 or 4s. Let's go ahead and get it out of the box and get a closer look at it. So inside the box is a Sky RC E4 AC input charger. It's rated all the way up to 4s and it'll charge at 1, 2 or 3 amps depending on where you switch it to. And it looks like it'll charge both LiPo batteries and LIFE batteries. Also included in the box was the instruction manual and the cord for charging the battery which comes with an XT60 plug along with the power cord which is a US style power cord but I also found in the main box that there were three adapters for if you live in a different country or you're going to be using it in a different country let's go ahead and move on to the next items and it looks like there's two boxes in the back here let me go ahead and get those out and see what's inside them in the first box I opened is the battery flight pack and it looks like it's a 3S 11.1 volt 8C battery rated at 5100 milliamps Man, this battery is pretty small for considering how large a milliamp it is. I think it's probably the smallest 5100 milliamp battery I've ever seen. And it feels pretty light too for its size. Alright, let's go ahead and move on to box number two. These are all the items that were in the second box. As you can see in the bottom here, we have eight AA batteries, which are for the radio transmitter. And in this first bag here, we have the 3D Robotics Mavlink radio module with the antenna. And the bag next to it has the Android OTG adapter cable for hooking up that module to your Android device so you can uh, plan out your missions for autonomous flight. 
Also in that second bag is a micro SD adapter, which is used with the micro SD cards that are used in your PixHawk, so that way you can read them. The third bag over here has some tools in it. We have a wrench for when we change out the props, it holds the motors for you. And there's also some Allen keys in there that fit the different size bolts that are on the quadcopter. The last bag here has a USB cable for hooking the quadcopter up to your computer when you want to do firmware updates and change the settings. Alright, let's go ahead and look in the main box and see what else we have. Alright, looks like we have a couple smaller items left that we need to pull out of the box before we can get the quad out. So let me get them out and we'll take a look at them. These two black boxes were underneath the quad arms and in them were the four self-tightening props that screw right onto the motors. As you can see here, the next item are a set of the longer legs. These are used to give you more ground clearance when you're going to be running a gimbal off the bottom of the quadcopter. The last item we have to look at before we pull the quadcopter out of the box is the LipoGuard bag that they've included. This is for when you're charging your batteries. It's always a safe idea to have them in a LiPo safe bag. This is a fire resistant bag, so if something happens with your LiPo, at least you're somewhat protected. Alright, now let's go ahead and uh, get the quadcopter out of the box. Okay, here's the quadcopter out of the box. As you can see, it is fully assembled. And uh, it does feel very sturdy and robust. On the bottom of it, we can see that there are uh, cables already run out for hooking up a gimbal. It says that if you're not going to be using a gimbal, to just uh, put the wires back in through the slots in the belly here so they're not hanging out. But I do have a gimbal that we're going to look at next that I will be using on here. So those are, that's a good thing that the wires are already outside the quadcopter. It'll make it easier for hooking it up. And uh, the front of it looks like it has a standard GoPro style mount for if you don't want to use a gimbal. You can uh, bolt the GoPro directly on the front of the quadcopter. I may go ahead and remove this mount since I won't be using it because I will be putting my Sony Action Cam on here with the gimbal as I said earlier. So that's pretty much the whole unboxing of this uh, Iris Plus quadcopter. There is one last thing in the bottom of the box underneath the quadcopter that we're going to take a look at. There are some uh, Iris Plus stickers. The Iris Plus instruction manual which is in English and is very well illustrated. It also has a how-to video card here telling you the links where you can go watch some how-to videos. There's a user disclaimer on here as well and of course they put in a flight check card for everything you need to check before you fly it each time and it's got stuff on the front and the back of that so that's pretty cool alright guys that's pretty much everything that was in the box now we can take a quick look at the brushless gimbal I got for my Sony action cam I've had my Sony action cam for quite a while and have had trouble trying to find a plug-and-play gimbal for it um, I just happened to get lucky and searched and found one on eBay that's actually made for the Sony Action Cam to fit on the Iris Plus. This gimbal is actually made for the Iris Plus. So I went ahead and ordered one. It was $149 and I came with free two-day delivery. So it's here now and we're going to go ahead and put the Sony Action Cam in it and bolt it onto the Iris Plus and test it out. This plug and play gimbal does come with a set of mounting instructions and it also has a picture showing how to hook up all the wires to the Iris Plus to make sure that everything works correctly. It's supposed to be calibrated out of the box and ready to go. Also included are copies of all the default settings in Basecam so that way you'll have them if you decide to make changes on your own. Now I have my Sony Action Cam bolted in the gimbal and it's mounted onto the bottom of the Iris Plus. We can uh, control the tilt with the knob on the controller so let's see how it works. You can turn it all the way down and it'll point straight down or tilt it back up to level. Now let's pick it up and test out the gimbal to see how smooth it is and how it works. Looks like it's uh, doing its job. It's keeping the camera level and it's nice and smooth and most importantly it's very quiet. I don't hear any buzzing or anything like that at all. I'm pretty satisfied with the way the gimbal's working. Alright, this is going to be it for this video. We're going to be doing the maiden flight and a full flight review coming up next. So please stay tuned. I'll put links in the video information bar to the Iris Plus quadcopter and the gimbal that I bought. And until next time guys, thanks for watching Die Hard RC Addicts.